Excuse me, do you know where Graydon Carter's office is? Dear David, very good to have you on staff. Here's a token of my appreciation. Warmest regards, Graydon. Nothing, Mr. Lawson. I just wanted to see if you had a picture of Graydon in your office. He gave me one. I guess you've got your answer. Hi, David. I was just, uh, never mind. Dear Graydon, thank you for the incredibly thoughtful picture of yourself. I am honored to raise it in my workstation. I notice that a number of the editors also have copies in their offices. It's nice to be part of this special club. Thanks again, Graydon. Have a great day, David. Thanks for the note, David. They're just. Oh, hi, I'm Graydon Carter. Welcome to the September issue of Vanity Fair. I'm thrilled to feature the first woman of France, Carla Bruni Sarkozy, on the cover of our third annual style issue. Star reporter and Vanity Fair special correspondent Maureen Orth was granted unprecedented access to one half of Europe's Camelot, a woman who's as real politic as she is polished. The stunning pictures taken by Annie Leibovitz may help explain why Bruni's approval ratings have soared despite her husband's sagging popularity. Bruni is also a member of the 69th Annual International Best Dress List, officially administered by the editors of Vanity Fair. This year's list is composed of the world's most stylish men and women from all walks of life. Also representing the political sphere is Michelle Obama and Diana Taylor, the unofficial First Lady of New York City. From Hollywood, there are actors Daniel Craig and Sarah Jessica Parker, and Tinseltown's leading couple, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. Members from European society include Kate Middleton and Heinrich von Furstenberg. The inimitable Fran Leibowitz highlights this year's Hall of Fame inductees. The world's eyes have been on Zimbabwe for the past few months, as aging despot Robert Mugabe has unleashed his thuggish band of assassins to rob the country of its first democratic election. One reason that Mugabe got away with murder, literally, is that he expelled Western journalists from its borders. However, acclaimed reporter and Zimbabwe native Peter Godwin, who was arrested while reporting this piece, was an exception to the rule. With unprecedented access to key political figures and a local's comprehension of on-the-ground realities, he's written an extraordinary story that vividly captures what the people of Zimbabwe call the fear. Back in New York, Pulitzer Prize-winning architectural critic Paul Goldberger examines the world's most luxurious and expensive new apartment building, 15 Central Park West. As a counterpoint to the glassy towers that look more like office buildings than they do residences, architect Robert A. M. Stern has created a monument the city's most heroic buildings of the pre-war era. But are the apartments worth their eight-figure price tags? You'll have to see for yourself. 
Not far from Central Park West, on East 52nd Street, sits a small, elegant carriage house, which for the last 45 years has been the home of La Grenouille, one of the city's most glamorous places to rub elbows at lunch and dinner. In his first full-length piece for Vanity Fair, Doug McGrath, who directed the movies Emma and Infamous, and used to be Woody Allen's writing partner, takes us back in time to explain why the little frog on 52nd Street is the last of a dying breed. And finally, this month caps the nearly year-long refurbishment of columnist Christopher Hitchens, who's attempted to renovate his middle-aged physique through various waxings, dental surgeries, and fitness programs. In this final installment of his self-improvement series, Hitchens gets his hair professionally cut, hits the gym, and reflects on the monastic life. I'm Graydon Carter. Thanks for being with us again today. And now to the Vanity Fair Studio Orchestra. Enjoy the rest of your summer.